Good morning. This is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. And I thought I'd do a video record of um, the whole farm. It's going to be two days before uh, the hard freeze they're expecting in two days here. And hopefully all of the defenses we put in place um, with our management will keep our fruit from freezing and dropping off our mango trees this year. <clears throat> we'll see. It, I'm not really having any anxiety about it because um, if it all drops off, then I don't have to put on my fruit monger hat and worry about schlepping mangoes and picking mangoes and selling mangoes. Because I have to sell them because this is a farm and it's just me that does it and I really don't like <laughs> doing that aspect of farming for some reason. I mean, I'll, I, I do it when I have to get food for myself, but as far as picking it and selling the fruit, it's like, ugh, it's, it's stressful because I want the fruit to be perfect. I don't want anybody to have a bad experience. So it puts a lot of stress on me and limits the fruit I will sell and blah, blah, blah. I create too many obstructions. So a natural uh, stressor, like uh, a freeze coming up, isn't causing a anxiety uh, response in me, thank God. So a lot of our mangoes are in full bloom. This is the Lancetia mango. I had a question from one of the viewers. It was Bill Gates, and he said he had a yard that he would like to grow some fruit and some vegetables, and he doesn't have any animals, and other than the, letting the native orchard floor grow, what can he do? Uh, it's like such a hard question. And I found that the problem is uh, compaction. It's the root cause of all the problem here in Florida because everyone drives on their uh, lawns and that's where they plant their fruit trees and that's how they grow citrus. And um, I've been hoarding rare tropical fruit, or no, <laughs> yeah, I already did that. I've been hoarding uh, rare aeroids and um, they made me start looking at calcium oxalate because that's what's in the, um, that's what's in the, and uh, uh, tissue of the the philodendrons and stuff that is poison to to us that will kill us uh, the crystals calcium oxalate crystals that are in all plants and in all fungi so the fungi uh, hyphae attached to the carbonate calcium carbonate rock and excrete an enzyme that breaks down the calcium carbonate into that form uh, calcium oxalate, which is a crystal. Then they transport those on their hyph hyphae. So the uh, calcium is um, the thing that unlocks all the other problems or causes all the other problems. So if you can't unlock the calcium, and we're on calcium carbonate uh, rock, um, you're not really going to be able to grow. So if you stop mowing your yard and um, all you have is a short lawn growing in there, you probably have some severe compaction issues. So you're going to have to like either dig some deep holes or break it up somehow, and then go from there. I found that if I plant a lot of plants and dig up a bunch of holes all around the trees where I'm growing the plant that that and then apply manures that usually helps so if you don't have manure to apply I found the best um, manure source was Josephine Porter Institute it's a biodynamic uh, inputs and you don't need very much and then you got to leave all the um, the debris, the yard debris, you can't remove anything. And a lot of times you have to add carbon. So 
getting pine shavings from like tractor supply or some other source. I know that the tractor supply ones are organic approved. So using those as an organic source, um, applying those daily. You have to, I think uh, inputs should be applied daily. Uh, I know a lot of places say every 10 days, but in a system like this, if you threw like wood shavings into it a little bit a day, it would be good for it. I'm not saying cover it. I mean, I put 2,700 pounds of manure per acre here per year. <clears throat> it's just a matter of staying off of it and seeing if there's going to be compaction. So the calcium oxalate that forms in the plant, um, they found is responsible for the flow of water. So they also found that the calcium oxalate in plant can do a form of internal photosynthesis or carbon, carbon dioxide production because it breaks down internally inside the plant during drought and releases carbon dioxide. And, they clo and it's from a, a non-gas source, the carbon dioxide. So it's coming from the soil through the calcium oxalate in the plant. So the compaction, which we do in Florida, this is our path, it stays compacted. You don't see any black stuff growing there. Because it just, when you drive on it, you you don't have the, the roots growing in the ground. And it forms a compaction layer, which uh, makes an acidic uh, pH, which is prevents your plant from uptaking calcium and prevents anything else from happening. So the calcium oxalate that's in these uh, rare aeroids and all plants and fungi also is um, responsible for pest and disease because they the calcium they're finding in strawberries. Um, uh, can prevent powdery mildew and the calcium oxide in the plants prevents insects. That's why I'm kind of surprised that the the rare aeroid plant house plant people they have issues with pests because the rare aeroids are naturally uh, insect resistant, but um, when you're supplying nutrients, plant available nutrients, and the plants aren't forming relationships with the soil for the uptake of nutrients, you're not going to get the formation of, uh, or the defense triggers because your plant is not, it's homeostasis isn't um, right. So the plant isn't functioning normally. So this, this little mango tree, if it's not functioning normally, it's diverting resources to combat that in, inequity of its natural processes. So if it's being affected by cold and it's up and it's uptaking uh, nutrients synthetically or through, you know, with water soluble nutrients, then the plant doesn't have a, a source in the soil to distribute a uh, immune response because it gets it from the soil, not from your solution. And if your soil's compacted, this is what mangoes look like. They get leaf burn and they don't grow. Because if you don't have the, uh, the non-compacted soil, the calcium can't flow through it naturally with the water. Because water moves through soil, should move through soil. Just like we breathe air, water needs to move through the soil. So I combat that by throwing down some manure, you know, 
and planting vegetables in it and that usually fix it but if I knew now what I knew, if I knew when I started what I know now, I would have probably did some uh, strategic tilling uh, to break up the, the hard pan layer that I knew was there. Little mangoes. So these trees back here aren't quite as like productive and blooming as much as the ones around the house because the ones around the house got more compost and manure for sure these are getting there this was a really bad area though that had standing water that um i finally buried our biodynamic horn manure or horn, all, the whole horn so one whole horn that had been buried in the ground underground for six months and then dug up and then was reburied in areas that I deemed to be uh, water was not moving through them or uh, they uh, stuff wouldn't grow in them. And it, seemed, it helped this area. This is the first year summer that we had no standing water in this area. So uh, we don't have standing water anymore. We didn't this year, even, you know, it's six inches of rain for several days and not to have any standing water is pretty amazing because I know none of my neighbors have that, but they mow their pastures and they mow their lawns. Fungi cannot prosper in compacted soils. You know, fungi get squished down because they're mostly water. So they're transporting, they're I think they're responsible for the calcium cycle that is responsible for the plant's homeostasis. For the plant's ability to function normally. <clears throat> So these chemicals that people use in Florida and then their uh, management practice, I mean, uh, growing citrus in a mowed lawn and then removing all the, the organic, the living plants from around the tree is a sure way to ensure that your citrus is going to fail because calcium can't be uptaking, uptaken normally in the, you know, the compacted conditions that you create with your management. And um, that's why you have pests and disease and that's why the citrus only lives 15 years now. It's like, I mean, you need to wake up citrus people. <clears throat> Bill Gates probably has the ability to turn Florida into a tropical fruit Eden with all the land that he owns. I was very surprised that he watches my videos. Kind of, uh, it was nice that he thanked me for my inspirational videos. I, I like that, but I wish he would like um, turn all his Florida farmland that he owns into Eden, because I mean it's pretty obvious that it can be done here. I mean this is like on its way to becoming tropical fruit Eden for me. I know that. And we don't have to water. And we are not affected by acidic soils because acidic soils in Florida are caused by no organic matter in the ground. So the only way you can get the organic matter into the ground with the biology is with the living root. That's why the system is superior to all other systems for Florida. This is a horribly compacted area that, you know, the grass, look, it's like, it's this short. 
after three years. So what I've done is in previous areas that were like that is um, plant vegetables. Throw down the compost, the biodynamic compost, or the, uh, in this case, it was the daily manure. If you don't have uh, animals, you can, you can buy organic compost and plant the plants. If you plant the plants, the biology will come. Earthworms are naturally attracted to manure, so we have lots of earthworms here. Um, This lychee tree, I mean, you could tell this was like a bad area. And it has the leaf burn on the edge of the tips. That's from, uh, it's not uptaking calcium correctly, which means it's not uptaking water correctly. This one's starting to get better. This tree died from, uh, or it's not dead. It's got a piece that's alive, but it's got hit by lightning twice, so. I'm gonna plant my rare aeroids on it. I'm obsessed with my rare aeroids. <clears throat> Just like the tropical fruit trees though. I guess star fruit is a calcium oxalate super plant, but it has the absorbable, absorbable kind in it. But too much of it, I guess, can cause renal issues in some people. I wonder if this is going to be all brown. Burnt, crispy brown from the freeze. The cashews seem okay. Um, You gotta have the fungi in the soil in order for uh, the calcium cycle to work correctly. And um, you can't get it in a mode system or in a hydroponic system. That's why in a hydroponic system, uh, when they take these rare aeroids and they put them in like a solution like pond, or whatever they use for their house plants, they start losing leaves. Their leaves start yellowing. The spotting on the leaves is that calcium, your calcium cycle isn't working correctly. Excess calcium from the water soluble nutrients you're feeding your plant. And that's how it gets rid of it. This was a horrible, horrible area. And uh, you see there's no trees in here. It's not like I haven't planted trees in here. This is like, and this has gotten all the inputs, but sometimes the inputs and the planting of the plants and everything else just doesn't seem to work. You just have to keep doing it. This is so, you know, I planted these vegetables in here. They're doing quite good. Here's a radish. I don't worry about E. coli and these are growing right in my manure. People, uh, I don't sell these vegetables, even though I could sell them organic because it's been more than 30 days since I mixed the manure into the soil or mixed it and planted seeds on it. It's like some loophole they have.
all dry farmed. That's what I mean. In Florida, you can... That's crazy that they can't even grow citrus here. This is the easiest plant in the world for Florida. This Inga Cinnamonia froze back last year at 31 degrees, but this didn't freeze. This mango. This uh, Anona reticulata custard apple. It didn't freeze. The ginger, none of the ginger froze last year. We'll see this year. Uh, this is a little citrus. Look at this fungi, the hair, the hair growing on it. I mean, it's not cool. So I guess the zebu manure is like, have some more minerals and uh, more calcium than the regular cow manure. I guess I should dig up these uh, sweet potatoes I have here. Eat some of those. <clears throat> Here's some more of this fungi. Look at that. I mean, look at how cool that is. See all these fungi, they are like able to move through the soil with their hyphae if it's not compacted. You're not using fungicides. I mean, how like dangerous is that? So the fungi, fungi is what delivers the nutrients to your plant, to plants, and you're we're like fungiciding the soil. I wonder why we're killing all the manatees because you're killing. We're killing all the canaries, people. That's what people do, it, from what I can see. They don't think about anything else or anyone else other than their own personal tree. I understand that. The only way I can stop thinking about growing is by buying plants, hoarding plants that I'm obsessed with. Other, otherwise, this stuff like this just constantly goes through my head and I'm constantly looking for uh, information on calcium oxalate and biominerals and... Uh, nutrient uptakes in plants and what causes disease, what prevents disease, what's good for uh, um, what's good for the the drought really in Florida the most important thing is to get the carbon into the soil so that you can buffer the pH so that your plant can uptake nutrients and nutrients can move through the soil via the, the biology that lives in the roots of the, all these plants. Because all these bacteria and fungi that, and nematodes and soil life, basically, are just scavengers of nutrients. So if you don't have them in your soil, you're not gonna have a very big nutrient pool for your plant to draw from. We need all that stuff. We need bacteria, we need fungi. We don't need bad farming practices. That's not what Florida needs. Florida, really, you don't need to know anything because if you plant your tree in your yard, it'll probably survive. But if you start implementing your practices on it, it'll probably die eventually.
earthworm castings, all those inputs. <clears throat> they all have to be organic though. You gotta know your source. You gotta know your source of anything that you're putting in your body or in your system, your growing system. So all these chemicals that they're using on their house plants. The fungicides and insecticides for sure probably have the potential to <clears throat> cause cancer in you. I would guess if you're breathing them in at night while you're sleeping. And we don't even need to use them. It's crazy, just people's knowledge and the, the campaign against bacteria and fungi caused by, from the chemical industry. The killing substances. Anyway, this is philodendron for Catum. It's got gorgeous leaves on it and they get huge. Um, this is philodendron meme, another gorgeous leaf philodendron. This is philodendron tenu. This is philodendron delsinkii. This one's, I think, looks a lot like, uh, Looks a lot like a, a Spirit of Sancti, philodendron. So the respiration, the water droplets on the leaves, I always look at that to, as a sign of that the plant is uh, um, cycling nutrients properly. It's a good thing. So that's uh, there's uh, excess calcium probably in that water. They, that's a way to expel nutrients that it doesn't need. That's why cocoa water is nutrient dense because if it's gone through the plant, it's probably got a lot of minerals in it, biominerals. Just look at these mangoes real quick and then walk up to the driveway and call it a day on this video. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't, I don't know. I've just, I try not to think about it, but it's just people like to mow their lawns here and uh, that's like turns the, you know, so the water cycle can't fl run cl correctly. And if that can't run cl correctly, then the, the nutrient cycle of the soils can't run correctly. And um, all the pollution they use, the sprays, the, all the insecticides and stuff they use around their house just flows right into the lagoon, their herbicides, because we all know that the citrus industry uses lots of herbicides, um, flows right into the Indian River Lagoon, which was once the most uh, biodiverse spot in North America, but now is like a, probably a, not the case. Kill, it's killing the manatees. Killed the grass, it's killing the manatees. But people like their lawns and what they want is more important than what's right in their minds. And um, I don't know, it's gonna take somebody with a lot of land to show what can be done or a lot of us homeowners with little islands of yards to try to change it ourselves. Just gonna go down to the front of the property here just so I have a full visual of what went on. It's our Rolinia. That's why when you use chemicals in compacted soil and you add water, your plants start doing better. 
It's not because your tree is healthy. It's just that that's the only thing that can grow in compacted soils if you're providing nutrients in a basically a, uh, a uh, it's basically like a hydroponic system in Florida. <clears throat> that's why they add calcium. You know that you know the big calcium is mined here and cause a major pollution in Tampa area. It's radioactive pollution. That you don't need. Why are you mining calcium in Florida? Why do you have to apply it in Florida? It's because you're of the mismanagement in our agricultural systems and the failure to recognize it. <clears throat> yep, that's about it. Anyway, this is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit farm two days before a hard freeze is supposed to hit and this is florida natural farming let's clean it up together have a good day